Welcome to our lecture online. In this example, we're going to try to find the volume of the segment of the sphere. This is the sphere of radius r. The radius is 5. And we're going to cut off a section. We want to know what the volume is of that top section. The strategy is to find the volume of the entire cone. And then we're going to subtract the volume of this portion right here, leaving us with the volume of the top only. So the volume of the cone, we've done that before, that's equal to the triple integral of dv. dv would be a volume element of rho squared sine of phi d rho d theta d phi, rho being the variable in the direction from the center to the edge, the radial direction. And so the limits are from 0 to the edge of the sphere, from 0 to 2 pi all the way around in the angle theta, and from 0 to pi over 3, a 60 degree angle, from the top to here to just get that portion of the full volume of the sphere, that cone shape first. So first let's integrate rho squared d rho. Uh, that becomes rho cube over 3. So this is equal to, we have the integral left from 0 to 2 pi and from 0 to pi over 3. And this becomes rho cubed over 3 evaluated from 0 to the edge of the sphere. And we have left the sine of phi d theta d phi. So when we plug in the upper limit, we get r cubed over 3. Plug in the lower limit, we get 0. So we can then pull out the integral sine r cubed over 3. And then we have left this integral from 0 to pi over 3. And the integral from 0 to 2 pi of the sine of phi d theta d phi. So the next integral we're going to do is the theta integral. We're going to integrate theta, uh, d theta becomes theta, and, and evaluate from 0 to 2 pi. So this becomes equal to, now we have a single integral left. We can't forget the r cubed over 3 from 0 to pi over 3, or 60 degrees. And then we have the angle theta evaluator from 0 to 2 pi. And then we have the sine of phi d phi left. Here when we plug in the upper limit, we get 2 pi. Plug in the lower limit, we get 0. So this becomes equal to 2 pi r cubed over 3. So that's what we have here times 2 pi. And then we have the single integral left from 0 to pi over 3 of the sine of phi d phi. Now, when we integrate that one, we get the negative cosine. So this becomes equal to 2 pi r cubed over 3 times the negative cosine of phi evaluated from 0 to pi over 3. So pi over 3, that's 60 degrees. The cosine of 60 is 1 half, but we have a negative in front here. So this becomes equal to 2 pi r cubed divided by 3 times a negative 1 half minus a minus. That becomes plus. We plug in the lower limit. The cosine of 0 is 1, so the minus 1 half plus 1 which is a um, plus one half that cancels out the two here that gives us pi r cubed over three. And so this is the volume of the full cone, the top portion we're looking for, plus this bottom portion right here. So what we're going to do then is say that the volume of the top portion that we're looking for will be equal to volume of the whole cone that we found, which is equal to pi r cubed over three, minus the volume of the bottom portion. Now the bottom portion is going to be a right circular cone, which is upside down. We have the base here, and then we have the height. So we're going to call this small r, the distance from there to there, and we're going to call this the height h. And notice that this angle here is the angle of 60 degrees. We'll call that phi. Now what we have here, that's the same as this angle phi on this side. So what we have here, we have, we have to find r and h. Now h can be found by saying that this is the, hmm, that would be the adjacent side to the angle. There's a hypotenuse, so we can say that h is equal to the hypotenuse, which is r, times the cosine of the angle phi. Now the cosine of phi is 60 degrees, so this is equal to r times the cosine of 60 degrees. And 60 degrees, the cosine of that, that's one half. So therefore, the height of the cone, or I should say the bottom portion here, the right circular cone, is going to be r over 2. So now we have the height of that 
bottom portion of the full cone. Now we need r, the distance from there to there. So we can say that r is equal to the radius of the sphere times the sine of 60 degrees, which is the square root of 3 over 2. So we know that r is equal to the square root of 3 over 2 times the radius, like that. Okay, now we're ready to calculate the volume of the bottom portion of the cone. Let's do that over here. The volume of the bottom is equal to one-third the base times the height, because that's the volume equation, the volume formula for a right circular cone. The base is going to be pi r squared, so this is equal to one-third pi little r squared times the height, and now we're going to put in its place what r is equal to and what h is equal to. So this is equal to one-third pi times r squared, that's the square root of 3 over 2 squared, which is 0 0.75, three-fourths, uh, times r squared, and then we multiply times h, which is one-half r. So notice we have one-third, three-quarters, one-half, times r cubed, so this is equal to, well, let me write it like this, so it's easier to simplify. So we have one-third times three-quarters times one-half pi r cubed. So that makes it easier to simplify. Notice the threes cancel out, and we end up with one-eight. So this becomes one over eight pi r cubed. So that's the volume of this bottom portion. We want the volume of the top portion. So volume of the top equals the total volume of the cone minus the volume of the bottom. The volume of the cone is one-third pi r cubed minus the volume of the right circular portion. The bottom portion is one-eight pi r cubed. So now we have to subtract one-eight from one-third. Common denominator is 24. So this would be 8 over 24 pi r cubed minus 3 over 24 pi r cubed. So 8 minus 3 is 5. So the volume of the top portion of that would be equal to 5 over 24 pi r cubed. That should, should be a 3 right there. There we go. And that's our final answer. And that's how we do that.